If you're like me and you like to play a nice game of poker with your buddies, there's nothing better than doing it on your own custom table. Sometimes they're kind of hard to store, but I'm going to show you how to do a folding one. So let's shuffle up and deal. So starting off, I already had a folding table, but it's old, the rail is getting ripped up, the felt is not great, the cards don't slide, and it's really kind of small for 10 people. But it does have some nice folding features here, you know, the folding legs are, are pretty good. Um, so originally I was just going to refelt this one and reupholster this one, but then I discovered it had a thousand staples and it took me like three hours just to take two of them out. So after a bit, I was like, screw this, man, I'm not going to deal with all these staples. So I just decided to, to, to build a new one. Um, but I did want to keep the legs, so I unscrewed the legs from the old table and uh, this is what I'm going to be using for the new one. So here's what I did. I have this point right here is where the pencil is going to go. And then what I did was I marked, so I'm going to be making three different cuts, 19 inch, 22 inch, and 24 inch. So this is 24 inches from here. This one is 22 inches from there and this one is 19 and a half from there. So this this here is the pencil. So I'm going to take this mark right here and when I'm going to make a 19 inch cut, you know, circle around, I put it on the 19. When it's 22nd, 22, and then 24. So what happens is I'll do 19 here, I'll drill, and then this will pivot all around like this. And with the pencil over there, it'll give me a circular mark for me to use the jigsaw and that's how I did both plywoods Here are the two pieces we cut out all together. What I did was uh, I glued the two inch piece and nailed it in as well, right over the four and a half inch. And this should fit snug Now since I'm going to be doing a folding table, I marked the center right here and I'm going to cut that down the middle. I got more material today. I have the um, two-tone suited speed cloth right there. I got the uh, Modena poker table rail vinyl right there. 
and I also got the Valera poker table foam padding. I got 10 feet of that, and I got nine feet of each one of these. As you can see, the speed cloth is pretty cool. Got a suited pattern, uh, two-tone colors. Card should be flying off. I also got the foam for the handrail. This foam is a lot thicker than what I'm using for the actual playing surface. And this should be nice and comfy once you wrap it with the leatherette. Now it's time to put the rail on the foam. I have the one inch foam laying on the floor and I basically put the rail on top of it. I'm gonna mark it before I start doing any sort of cutting. On the outside of the rail, I would probably leave like three inches. And on the inside, leave about one and a half. I'm actually going to cut it in half, right up the middle, so I can work with two separate pieces, and that'll make it a little bit easier. So to cut it down the middle, what I'm going to do is, I set each of the rails three and a half inches from the end of the foam. So I spread out the rail to equal three and a half inches on one side, three and a half inches on the other side, and then that space in the middle, I'm going to cut it right down the middle. Just cut the foam right there. That'll give me a little bit of play because I eventually want to just do three inches on each side so it'll give me half an inch to work with. After all the sides are marked off, the one inch and the three inch all around, you can go ahead and cut. And I'm using just a blade right here. After you cut the foam, it should pretty much look like this. You got one inch and a half inside, three inches around on the outside. So make sure you keep them separated. I got one there and then I got the other one right here. Next step is to get some adhesive and uh, glue them together. So here we're gonna do one of the sides of the table. I laid it pad facing down. And we're gonna do the speed cloth. You kinda of put it in the middle a little bit, you know, since it's two pieces, try to leave a little space down here uh, so you can fold it over and leave enough space for the second part as well. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is start putting the hinges and the legs underneath the table. Now, this hinge here will help it fold over like this. These legs here will fold down and I got these legs and these hinges from the old table and it's just a matter of getting them measured in and, and screwing them in. 
if you don't have you know an old table to use the hinges and legs from you know you can find them online So when it's time to do the vinyl, just uh, find a place that's nice and soft, put it on a rug or something, and lay the vinyl face down. Put the rail on the vinyl, just allow uh, you know several inches all around because you're gonna have to pull it really tight and you want some room to pull and also to staple it onto the rail. Once you do that, cut it down the middle since we're gonna have two halves. Start off by stapling the outside of the rail. Start with the straight edges on both sides and then just work your way around the outside curve. When you finish stapling around the outside, go back into the middle and measure about two and a half inches from the straight side and about five inches from the rounded side uh, and make a mark. You're gonna make that mark and then you're gonna be cutting along that mark. And uh, the leftover vinyl is what you're gonna use to pull and to staple to the rail. Once you make that cut, do some stress relief cuts around the curve. Start about two inches from the edge of the rail and then you cut down and that's gonna help you be able to pull and to staple around the curve. You need those relief cuts or else it's, it's pretty impossible to do that. Make sure when you are pulling it, you are pulling really tight. And once you're done with that all around, just cut the excess vinyl. And it should look like this. Make sure the inner edge is clear because that is what's gonna sit on the table and you add the rail to the table. Then do a dry fit, make sure everything fits nice. So what you wanna do is make sure these two joints are exactly on this line. So when you fold it, it folds the proper way. You see here, put a one and a quarter screw all around here to fasten this rail. So I'm gonna go right here, right there, right there, and all the way around. So here's what the table looks like with the rails on. Some of you may be wondering, where are the cup holders? Well, I didn't really wanna put cup holders in the bumpers because one, I think it ruins the look to, you know, when you're putting cans or bottles in there, it gets in the way. So what I'm gonna do is put them underneath the poker table. I found these really cool stainless steel adjustable folding cup drink holders. They're actually made for boats and cars, but I'm gonna use them for the table. Uh, it's great because they just screw in from underneath. I used a one and a quarter inch screws and you pull it out. You can put a can of beer, can of soda, bottle of beer whatever you know it's right there nice and slim and then when you're done you just take it out and you fold it back and it slides right in you don't even know it's there it's pretty great <laughs> 